This is intelligently collecting data at the edge with Apache NiFi and Minify. I hope everybody's enjoying the conference so far and uh, learning quite a bit. And hopefully, I won't repeat things you've already learned, but I'll bring some new information to the table and uh, we'll have a good discussion at the end. Um, I do like questions, so I'm going to make sure that I stop with some time left so that we can have a conversation. This is kind of an intermediate track for uh, NiFi Minify. Uh, I've given some talks earlier in the week that were more introductory, uh, bringing people into the conversation. This is, there is going to be a little bit of background, but I'm going to skip over that pretty quickly so that we can get to the more interesting parts. So what is, what's on the agenda? We're going to talk about data flow and the challenges. Um, that's a pretty core concept to the rest of this talk, but it's been addressed by, by myself, by some other speakers earlier in the week. Um, so we're going to move into IoT challenges and how that problem set is a little bit different than what we've tried to tackle in the data center in the core. We'll talk about Apache Minify. We'll move on to some exploration and actually go through some steps here. And then we'll talk about the community. I do provide all of my slides online, so you don't have to worry about transcribing things. But if you, no you want to take notes, if you have questions, that's absolutely perfectly fine. So what is data flow? Um, this is a definition that I've used a number of times. And it's pretty, it's pretty simple, so it applies to a lot of scenarios. Moving data from A to B. You have objects, um, producers, devices, sensors, computers, people who create data. And you need to access that data and move it into another system, some kind of follow-on system. That could be providing it to another person, putting it into a data lake, feeding it to another uh, machine or system, and then storing that as well. The content could be anything. Arbitrary bytes are perfectly fine here. We don't really care what the content itself is. NiFi is not uh, an analysis platform. It's not a, it can do transformation, but it's not concerned with the content structure. It's just moving bytes uh, very efficiently and, and very successfully, in my opinion. So some challenges in data flow. We have standards, formats, protocols, all kinds of challenges with the actual data that we're getting. Is it correct? Are we getting the correct uh, data? Like, are we getting all of it intact? Uh, schema differences. Then we have problems with the infrastructure. We have exactly once delivery. We have security. And I'm a security person myself, so both ensuring security of our system and overcoming the security that sometimes other organizations set up in our way um, are both very valid scenarios here. Credential management network. But these, everything we've talked about so far in these two columns, data and infrastructure, those challenges can be overcome, right? I mean, we put a man on the moon. We can do anything with data. When we get to challenges with people, that's where we're always going to have people. We're always going to have some of these challenges. Um, consumers change. Sometimes you're sending data from A to B, and all of a sudden, tomorrow, B no longer exists. That team is gone. That team's been reorganized. Should we just start dropping that data on the floor? Should A keep producing it? Are we going to be spending money storing data that nobody cares about? Or then a year from now, is the company going to reorganize and say, oh, now we actually do care about all that data that was there before? Requirements change. Raise your hand if you've ever finished a project that had the same requirements as when it started. You're a lucky person. Requirements change. What is noise today could very well be signal tomorrow, right? Metadata or additional data that we're capturing right now that we have zero use for could become incredibly important tomorrow. Maybe we're doing uh, breach analysis and forensics, and all of a sudden, all the user access logs that, yeah, as long as nothing stood out, we didn't really care. Now we need to go back and audit and trace and go through. We have PCI data or healthcare data. There's all kinds of information that I'm focused on this column right now, and tomorrow, this column is way more important. So do we drop that? Do we try to put it into glacier storage? Do we put it into backup? Or do we not care? So connecting A to B is pretty simple, but connecting multi-dimensional global networks, tons, millions of devices is less, uh, less simple. And so I have a line, if you want to just keep writing bash scripts and Python scripts to do this, that's fine. NiFi and Minify are here to make that easier for you. So what is Apache NiFi? 30 second definition here. It's a, da it's a robust, secure, and performant data delivery and data flow management platform. It's designed to help you access the data that you need from almost any source, perform simple event processing, transformation, routing, 
filtering, prioritization, security, move that data to the destinations that need it, and have a traceable, auditable record of doing that. A flow file is kind of our atomic unit of data. That's what moves through the system. In a flow file, the analogy I use is that it's very similar to HTTP data. You have a header and you have content. The header for our flow file is a pair, uh, it's a, a number of key value pairs. And these are called attributes. This could be the file name, the path that it, it originated from, timestamps, when it entered the system, when it was routed here, some keywords. You can extract data from the content and do, let's say you're Tim and you're doing image recognition and you start pulling keywords out using your, your machine learning and your neuro compute sticks. You can start putting those tags onto the attribute fields and then routing that data without having to go re-examine the content. The content, on the contrary, arbitrary bytes. Could be empty, could be 4K of text, could be 10 terabytes of CSV or video stream. We don't care. We put that content in what we call a content repository, which is a separate um, data storage built into NiFi so that we're not duplicating those bytes as we move them around the system. The flow file is always in memory. The attributes are always immediately accessible. But the content can be requested via a resource claim. But it's not blocking your heap. It's not moving around. It's not being duplicated if you don't need to. It is a uh, copy on write log. So if you modify content, let's say you have some kind of image and you transform the image in one of your processors, you'll retain both the original and the new version. And you'll have resource claims to both so you can trace back and see what happened. NiFi was designed to uh, provide these services to an audience that wasn't necessarily technically inclined. Um, this is not written for developers by developers. This is written for operators. And these are people that maybe it's 3 in the morning, and we have mission-critical data flowing across the globe, and it's all of a sudden a, s a service goes down. Some kind of uh, a data storage service crashes. That data doesn't stop flowing, and it's mission critical. It has to be captured. Obviously, they're going to call engineers, but it's 3 in the morning. That problem's not going to get solved in five minutes. And even five minutes may be too long. So what the operators can do, immediately be alerted, monitoring the system, literally drag a line to a new box, and the problem is mitigated. It's not solved, but it's mitigated for the time being. Write to local buffer, write to some other storage, do have a redundancy plan in place. But this is for people who are not necessarily engineers and coders. Now, if you are, great, because our documentation is written for you. But the user experience, the user interface, is very easy to use. It's drag and drop. It's put a box on the screen, draw a line, you're ready to go. Out of the box, NiFi comes with over 260 processors, which are our black box, black box unit of operation, uh, 48 controller services, which is shared common functionality. So maybe you have a flow that requires interacting with Amazon Web Services, and you're getting data from a couple buckets, you're transforming it locally, you're putting it back onto some other buckets. You can enter your Amazon username and password into every processor that in integrates with Amazon. But then when you change the bucket or you change the username, you got to go do that in seven places. With an AWS credentials controller service, you have that credential information saved in one place. It's secured everywhere in the system. All the other components that need that information reference that controller service. So you've minimized the exposure. You've deduplicated. It makes it a lot simpler to use. Uh, as far as the logos up here, pretty much anything that's been on uh, the Apache homepage in the last few years, we have some kind of interaction with. Uh, there's also all kinds of standards, different protocols, uh, different you know, text formats. We have the record parsers now that can go through and much more efficiently process um, large batches of data that are in our arbitrary formats as well. And you can even script your own. So if it's something that's not supported out of the box, it's very easy to implement. And then there are also custom processors. So if you have your organization has some kind of proprietary protocol or some secret algorithm that you need to run, uh, you can write a custom processor simple Java, maven archetype that uh, gets you up and going very quickly. The framework takes care of scheduling and, and uh, property validation and all the kinds of things that you usually have to build in yourself. So it's very easy to get up and running and write a custom processor that you can pick up, move around your organization, drop into any installation, and have that functionality out of the box. So we're moving quickly. 
we talked about um, so the basic data flow scenarios and how NiFi helps with that. But let's get into IoT challenges. Obviously, we have limited computing capability, right? If we're out on a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or some kind of small breadboard, we don't have the 64 gigabytes of RAM and terabytes of storage that we would in a data center system. We have limited power and network. Um, sometimes the software availability is very restricted, right? You may not be able to get the newest version of some dependency or some library that fixes problems that existed 20 years ago. You may not be able to get the software because it's proprietary. Uh, you know, a lot of the ICS and SCADA vendors do not want some other uh, consumer or producer on their system, right? It's barely tested anyway. It's definitely not tested if you start writing custom code and putting it onto their control system. There's no user interface. Could be physically inaccessible. This is a fairly modern building. It's uh, extremely large. Climate control systems, security systems, um, population control system, all kinds of devices are embedded throughout the building. Small sensors, they're probably all connected to some kind of monitoring network, but how many times a year do you think that the sensors up here in the ceiling are gone and like physically checked and replaced? How, how many times do you think that the thermistor's upgraded to get more accurate, accurate readings or calibrated? Like These devices are not something where you can just go to somebody else's desk and replace the computer. These are distributed, they're very difficult to access, especially in things like connected automobiles, uh, connected planes, um, industrial control systems, or oil rigs out in the North Sea. It's not easy to just go out and say, oh, we're going to upgrade everything here. Some recent examples of IoT challenges. Um, I tend to focus on security because that is my area. Everybody familiar with the Mirai botnet? So it's a, how many people have a connected refrigerator? Refrigerator that has the screen and you can stock your, your fridge and reorder items from Amazon or, or uh, I don't know who, Alibaba maybe. Um, those Samsung fridges were infected by a virus, a botnet, and uh, we're using them to send spam, mine cryptocurrency, all kinds of things. Your refrigerator. Uh, just the other day, actually, a casino in Las Vegas announced that their high roller database, the list of everybody who spends millions of dollars in the casino, was stolen by hackers, and the way they got it out was that they gained access to the system via an internet-connected aquarium thermometer in the lobby of the, ca of the casino. They were able to jump to the other network, it wasn't air-gapped, uh, escalation of privilege, access the database, and then exfilled it back over the same thermometer. So I'm sure somebody was going, why is this tank so hot? Why are the fish all dead? Because uh, it was pushing out a few gigs of data over the uh, small connection that it had. But don't worry, because NiFi solves everything. There's an asterisk, don't worry about that. NiFi runs on the JVM. JVM is widely available. Uh, NiFi provides a user interface for flow design and monitoring. Makes it easy, you don't have to be writing YAML by hand. Uh, it has security built in. Oh, we've got TLS, mutual authentication, um, authentication and authorization, multi-tenant authorization even. So you can have multiple teams running on the same NiFi instance, canvas together, never the twain shall meet, and we encrypt all the data. Handles practically any format and protocol, so NiFi is the answer to every problem. No, obviously not. NiFi on IoT is a challenge. Um, this is a, a Raspberry Pi. NiFi supports a number of messaging protocols, bus protocols, um, TCP, UDP, syslog, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's even some work being done on AWS IoT. With some manual surgery, you can pull out some of the stuff that you don't need. NiFi can fit on and run on a Raspberry Pi. So why bother doing anything else? Why not just say, okay, follow these instructions, delete these files out of the directory, it'll bring the, the file size down to this, you can fit on the Pi, start running it. Well, NiFi is designed to own whatever resources it's on, okay? It was written in a space that had specific resources, it was going to use all those resources. NiFi expands like the Borg. In 07, uh, you could get it onto a Pi. It's about 600 megs, and it would start up in about 10 to 15 minutes. With the 1.x release, which is a year and a half ago, um, it went up to about 30 minutes. 
And that's actually a screenshot of my terminal where I stop trying to connect to the Pi. That makes sense. I mean, NiFi now, this is actually the latest release, is 1.2 gigabytes compressed. Okay? It comes with an entire ecosystem of integration points and processors. It's designed to be extremely liberal in what we accept. Right? If you have some kind of data, we want to be able to process and move that data. But that's not the correct design for an IoT device or platform. So Apache Minify comes into the picture. Minify is a sub-project of NiFi. That's Apache terminology. It's not really relevant here, but I have to say it. The goal with Minify is to get the key parts of NiFi as close to the edge as possible. And what we call the edge is outside of our data center, outside of our centralized data collection, data warehouse, data lake systems. We want to get out to the edge. That's close to the sensor, right? That's close, that's close or in the connected car or plane. That's out on, if you have an electronics distributor, and so you have some central office, and you do all your data processing there, but you have stores throughout your country or the world, um, you might have, I know, especially in Europe, the credit card machines, you just walk around, right? It's not like it's a, a static point of sale terminal. So you have all these devices that are processing data. You could put Minify on them. You don't have to. You could also just put it on the store server that's running the time card system. Minify, NiFi goes in the data center. Minify goes everywhere else. So again, 1.2 gigs compressed. Minify out at the edge. No UI, right? We do the flow design inside NiFi, and then we export the flows. Um, Minify is a good guest. It's designed to run on systems that weren't built to run Minify. NiFi runs on systems that were designed for it. Minify, you throw it on anything that's available. Uh, 040 is the latest release of both the Java and C++ agent. And the Java agent, you can see, is 65 megs. C++ is 4. And as recently as uh, two uh, mini versions ago, it was small enough to fit on a floppy disk. Okay? So we really are trying to push to the absolute bleeding edge and get it onto devices that are not uh, built to be giant devices. As I mentioned, there's a, Ni there's a Java and a C++ version of, NiFi, uh, of Minify. Excuse me. The Java Minify is a cut down and um, trimmed version of NiFi. So out of the box, you get 110 or more uh, processors by default. So all the stuff that you're used to doing in NiFi, you can do directly in Minify. And in fact, if you have some custom processor, custom NAR that you built for NiFi, as long as the dependencies are there, you can just pick up that NAR and drop it into Minify, and it will work out of the box. So you have custom uh, control system protocol XYZ, and you've been processing that on your NiFi data cluster, and you want to bring Minify out and get it right next to the machines, and not do the heavy lifting, but do some kind of processing, like find these high priority signals and, and put them into the queue before other ones. But you need to be able to analyze that data structure out at the edge. Drop that NAR in. You know, you're probably not going to need the Hadoop NAR or the Hive NAR, but you put your little custom protocol NAR in there, and now you have access to that logic right out at the edge. The C++ version was written from scratch, uh, so it has a limited number of processors, but the trade-off is that it can run on much more limited hardware systems, things that don't support the JVM, things that don't have the memory to support that. Uh, in the center, you see a screenshot. That's NiFi doing some Minify flow design, so I'm building out a flow that I'm then going to export to a Minify instance. And on the right, you see that translated version of that flow. It's very simple YAML, so it's human-readable-ish, uh, machine-readable, certainly. And you can see the, uh, the properties that I've configured for that f the components in that flow are now exported and listed into the flow. This is what I was talking about. We drop the UI. That's not necessary. We reduce the number of components, and we trim the framework a little bit, things that weren't necessary for an edge system. So how does Minify interact with NiFi? Like, why do we need both? Again, NiFi is for designing the flows. It provides that nice user interface, brings in data from many sources. Right, Minify is usually, I'm connected to one or a few sources. I'm specifically focused on just this role. I have a limited scope of what I'm trying to do. Whereas NiFi is saying, I've got to be responsible for everything. So I'm going to bring in data from this Minify, from this Minify, from 10,000 other instances of Minify. And I'll handle all of that back at my data center. 
you can see it's not a black and white clear divide. Um, there is a balance. You can install Minify on a, a server, right? Let's say you just need to do log export um, for your SIM collection. You can do that with Minify. You don't need to put a whole NiFi instance. You don't need a user interface on that edge node, right? But when we say edge in that case, it's not a, a four gig Raspberry Pi, right? It's some data center server that's just in a different rack. So we add dimension excuse me, dimensionality. We're going global. We're going across the world. We're going large networks. This is a, um, a Qualcomm uh, radio and uh, as we call the platform box. It was designed uh, for a prototype in a connected car. And it allowed um, the information to be read off of the CAN bus and off of the infotainment system and provide data tagging and provenance. Um, governance from the edge. So does anybody work in automotive? Uh, a lot of the automotive companies are moving towards collecting a lot of data off of the cars that they're producing and using that to do anonymized, uh, large-scale learning. So let's say I'm, I'm getting information and, and GPS information and then CAN bus information, velocity, um, early field failure detection, all of this, and I can start to analyze and go, oh, cars that travel in this region of the country tend to have suspension problems. Cars that travel on this street tend to have suspension problems. Cars that travel on this area um, need the wipers replaced more frequently or the lights burn out more frequently and start to do analysis from that. Car companies in China can't necessarily do that because anything that has GPS data from China is legally prohibited from going to any computer that is outside the control of China. So you have your Amazon Cloud and you've set up. How do you know that every hop on the connection is in a computer that's definitely located in China? And can you prove that in court later? With Minify on the edge, you have a few options. You can say, okay, drop all GPS data from data that I exfil from this car. Drop GPS data from data that I exfil over the internet, but store it in a local buffer so that when I get back to some service center, I can have a hardwire connection that pulls that data off. Filter data that has GPS and don't send it, but send data that doesn't have GPS. So if the user changed the radio channel or they turned the steering wheel and it didn't have GPS affiliated with it. Um, so there's all kinds of, of restrictions and regulations that differ throughout the world and throughout organizations. I'm not going to tell you that you will even know all of them ahead of time. But with Minify, you have something that's very adaptive and responsive and can allow you to uh, make sure that you're in compliance with those and then prove it later through the data provenance. Security, again, you can talk to me afterwards and I'll talk your ear off about it, but security, providing encryption, providing uh, certificate-based authentication in both directions. So from Minify to the NiFi server and from NiFi sending information, we have a, a control plane and a data plane. So data plane to offload data and a control plane to send instructions back. Um, sending the instructions, also certificate-based authentication. With low latency, you can perform some very, very simple event processing, um, some kind of routing, some kind of detection, signal detection, and make decisions much closer to the edge, but be much more responsive. Deal with information that if you send it all the way back to your data center and perform some machine learning analysis on it, and got a, a, a few analysts in front of it and the data scientists, and by the time you made the decision, that information, one, is no longer relevant, and two, the window for the decision has already passed, maybe by the order of days or weeks. But if you're out at the edge, you can have these you know, tiny algorithms that say, okay, based on the presence of this signal or based on the presence of these combinations of signals, I want to make some kind of determination now. And I'll still send all that data back, and we can make better or higher level decisions later, but I've been able to respond to some scenario that I was aware of ahead of time in the meantime. This is a, a diagram of the, the connected car example, listening on different buses, pulling data in, being able to route it, and then, again, prioritize and filter it, execute and transmit it. This is what the demo looked like. So you can see a car driving around in uh, downtown San Jose. There were two radios on the chip. So basically, there's a Wi-Fi radio and an LTE radio. And the reason is that LTE is uh, omnipresent in the area, but it's expensive, right? Whereas Wi-Fi is limited to when you're in range of certain hotspots that they had a contract with, 
uh, but it's a much cheaper to transmit data. So cheaper not only in cost, but in power as well. So with this, we have Minify making routing decisions based on the data coming in. I'm sampling the engine temperature and the uh, RPM and, and the wheel rotation on all four wheels, um, steering wheel orientation, all that hundreds or, or thousands of times per second. I'm getting all that data and fe feeding it in. If there is a sudden change in acceleration or a sudden change in velocity, I want to know that. If there is an immediate change in steering wheel orientation of more than so many degrees, I want to know that. So Minify says, okay, those are high priority signals. And I'm going to send those over the LTE network because I want them to get back to your analysis immediately. I don't care about the cost. I don't need to sample the radio station hundreds of times per second, right? Even if the CAN bus does that and tells you, okay, at millisecond 01, it's on this channel. At millisecond 02, it's on this channel. At millisecond 03, it doesn't matter. I can sample that and say, okay, I, I want every 1,000 readings of that, or I want every 10,000 readings of that. And I can store all the extra readings locally. I can put a little you know, flash drive in there and store all of that and get it out later at the service center. But I don't need to be wasting money and bandwidth by sending, they're listening to the same song for three and a half minutes uh, every millisecond. To get data out of Minify and back to NiFi, site to site is a NiFi protocol. It's used, if anybody's used NiFi, uh, to communicate between NiFi instances, NiFi clusters, as well as NiFi back to itself. Um, an example of that is the provenance data, there's something called the site-to-site -site provenance reporting task, which allows you to exfil the provenance data from your NIFI instance. Um, an example that people don't always know about is you can use that to connect back to the same instance of NIFI and then read that provenance data in just as you would any other arbitrary structured format and process it however you want. Write it to HDFS, do simple event processing, do conversions to different formats, uh, whatever you like to do with it. Uh, there's a raw socket implementation. There's an HTTPS in implementation. The HTTPS is Java only. Um, it's being worked on actually as we speak for uh, C++. But that allows you to, um, when you're in a data center, uh, people didn't want to start opening up extra ports for socket connections. So you're on AWS. You just use HTTPS. It'll work fine. So let's talk about exploration. Actually, let's see how much time I have. I'm going to skip the exploration. It was a little like simulated demo of an IoT integration. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about it afterwards. I want to show you one example, and then we'll do questions. So this is, I hope the sound works here. This is a colleague of mine, Jeremy Dyer. He had a, uh, a new baby. As many, I don't know. If who has kids, who doesn't, but uh, if you don't, the weight of the excrement of your child is apparently a very important data point to collect. Um, tells you how healthy the baby is. Jeremy is both a nerd and also somebody who doesn't like to get his hands dirty. So rather than do that, he built a, an Alexa skill, I believe it's called, and then connected that to a NiFi instance, and Minify connected to an electronic scale. Alexa, ask Dataflow to log poop. 1.70 ounces of poop logged. I think it took him about two hours to do that. Um, so it's extremely extensible. It's extremely easy to build out. Uh, again, it's Java. If you want to write something custom for Minify C++, you can. Uh, it takes a little bit more work. It takes a little bit more experience with C, obviously. Um, but the Java custom processors are very easy to just drag and drop. I'm going to talk about the, yeah, the new stuff that's coming up here. So I've been saying in every talk, um, NiFi Registry was just introduced. This is a complementary application to both NiFi and Minify. It's a standalone service. It provides a repository for arbitrary assets. And right now, what we're using that for is flows. So instead of exporting XML templates, moving them around, not having traceability on them, within the NiFi user interface, you can now select a process group and say, commit this to my repository. And you change something there, you say, OK, commit this new version to my repository. It's literally uh, Git for NiFi flows. This also helps with environment production, uh, uh, sorry, environment promotion. 
So going from development to test to production environment, um, NiFi was designed for real-time modification and monitoring of the flows in a production environment. But a lot of people have infrastructure systems where they say, OK, we can never modify things as it's flowing in production. We need to go through a test harness. We need to go through a quality assurance. It gets signed off by n many people, and then it gets brought into production. Registry will make that much easier. Uh, you see the Minify versions both released 04 in uh, the end of January. And NiFi 1.6 was just released last week, two weeks ago. Uh, there is a talk later today on uh, flow development I with NiFi flow registry, NiFi registry. That's at 4 o'clock, I believe, in room 4. The Minify C2 server. This is something I think of interest to everybody in the room. It is in development right now. There's a feature proposal. There's um, some PRs up on the Apache NiFi community. Uh, I encourage you to look at that. It will basically allow for centralized command and control for entire classes of agents. So if you have 10,000 devices deployed, and 3,000 have these capabilities, and 3,000 have those capabilities, and 4,000 have some overlap, do you really want to go through and click 3,000 times to deploy a flow out to that many devices? Or do you want to say, hey, push the flows that are tagged with this to this class of devices. Get information back from this class of devices. Um, push a firmware update out. Push a new flow. Like, so that allows you to do this in a much more distributed and um, higher scale manner as opposed to the individual interaction with specific Minify instances that was previously or currently in place. Uh, community's healthy. We don't care about that so much. More talks. And uh, I'd like to take some questions, please. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes. Yes. So the question is, can Minify run on an Arduino, which is a very small device, uh, but fairly standard for IoT? Yes. And uh, Tim Spann was here earlier. I think he had to go to another meeting. Um, but yeah, there are examples of Minify running, uh, the C++ running on an Arduino. Yep. Yes. A warm start. So the question is, is it possible to do a warm startup in a new processor? Can you explain a little bit more? Uh -huh. So if you have memory and you want to restart the entire device, okay. So sure. So the question is, can I can I put a new processor into a NiFi instance without restarting the NiFi instance? Today, no. In the um, in an upcoming version, yes, because of the flow registry. So eventually, that will expand to be a processor registry as well, and you'll be able to pull. First of all, the initial installation of NiFi won't take as long because it's not going to have 1.2 gigabytes uh, of, of content there. So you can maybe say, I have my needs are Hadoop specific, or my needs are Hive specific, or my needs are IoT specific. I don't need Hadoop and Hive. And so download, essentially, like if you remember flavors of, of Linux distributions, right? You have like a server version or a desktop version. Being able to download that, so that's much faster and much better on bandwidth. Um, but then also pulling in versions of the NARS. With the NAR versioning that was introduced in 1.4, that's the groundwork for allowing that to happen. So today, no, but in the future, yes. In, in the near future, yes. Performance specs uh, are difficult to, to quantify just because the variety of, of use cases is so broad. Um, Minify Java, again, it is similar to NiFi in the sense that if you give it a lot of resources, it will use those resources performantly. It, it's the JVM. So if you say you have 10 threads and, and a few gigs of RAM, it'll use that. Um, you know, we've certainly seen hundreds to thousands of records per second being processed on um, consumer, you know, Raspberry Pi type chips and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, you can also, you can. Making a Minify cluster is a bad idea, but having lots of nodes of Minify report to a small NiFi node that manages them allows you to distribute the load that way. Yeah. Yes.
Yes, absolutely. So the question is, would I recommend using Minify to send serv server logs, I'm assuming, to some kind of collection point? Um, yes, and that's, that's a great use case for it, because you don't need the full NiFi installation out on these edge nodes that are just producing random you know, text logs, right? So it could be an Apache web server. It could be um, some kind of application server that's just producing log output. Yeah, you can absolutely install Minify. It's, a, it's pretty quiet, right? I'm sorry, in that case, does Minify handle the... Yes, so multiple line events, like a Java stack trace. Minify doesn't care, right? So if you're telling it, tail this file and take every line individually and do something with it, then it's going to do that. If you say, tail this file, and every minute pull in all of the text that's there, it's going to do that. It really allows you flexibility because whatever you're passing this onto is what's going to determine how you want that data formatted, right? So you could say, every day, I, I roll over my logs. Every day, take the last day's log and take that whole thing as one piece of content. You could say, every second, I want you to tail a specific log file and take every new line or new lines that have come in. Um, so it can certainly handle multi-line events because it doesn't really care about them. It's, it's ambivalent and agnostic to the data that's coming in. So is the order of sending guaranteed when you send data from Minify to NiFi? You can prioritize um, that data however you like. Uh, I have a different slide that shows there, there are custom prioritizers that you can drop in and say, I want it to send first in, first out. I want it to send things with this attribute first. Um, actually, I do have an example. Uh, I have one where I, I did it by parity just to show that it was possible. And so you can see that the, I set this priority attribute, and I have this message that was generated at 22.27.30, and this message that was generated at 22.27.29. So this one should have come first if it was just by time-based priority, but I've modified the priority and said, this one is a uh, priority two, that one's a priority one, I want that one first. Otherwise, it'll send in order. Yeah, it'll send it first in, first out by default. Um, it is guaranteed delivery. It's not guaranteed in order. It's because if you have network, you know, if you put them both on the network at the same time and one takes a different hop, but on the NiFi side, it'll, you can put them back in order. Yeah, you can ensure it. You can ensure order. It's just not at a specific point on the network that you're ensuring that order. Yeah. Yes? So that's a great question. Is Minify pushing the data, or is NiFi polling and pulling for data? Uh, you can set it up to do either one. You could set up Minify. I wouldn't recommend this, but you could set up Minify to say, I'm hosting an HTTP endpoint, and any consumer that wants to poll me can do that at their leisure. right? So if you had a system where maybe Minify, you don't know if it's online, and you want your external system to say, I'm going to check every hour and just get whatever's there, you could do that, because it means that Minify is not pushing every time a record comes in. But you also have to consider the power needs and the resource needs, right? So if Minify is on a system, do you want it to be listening all the time just in case an external service calls? Or do you want Minify to say, I'm going to keep my network off, I'm going to aggregate all this data, and then I'm going to uh, batch it up and push it in a burst. And that is high power for a short amount of time as opposed to low power for a long amount of time. So the capability is there to do either one. Um, it really depends on the needs of the, the external needs of your system. My answer is always it depends, but in general, yes, I would say push the data from Minify as opposed to polling from NiFi. Yeah. Yeah. There is back. Yes. So the question is: Is does the back pressure translate when I use a site-to-site -site connection from Minify to NiFi? For anybody who's not familiar with back pressure, it's the capability of the connections, those queues, to have limits set on them so that when they start to fill up, it informs the incoming processor, hey, 
I don't have room for more data. I'm, star I'm starting to get to this capacity, this capacity, this capacity. You should slow down. And that processor knows, okay, I will start to penalize and say, okay, I'm gonna yield my execution time uh, because I don't have anywhere to put this data. Back pressure through NiFi travels all the way back through the system. It's, again, we use a, a water pipe and irrigation analogy quite a bit. If you dam up water, it's gonna push back all the way. It's not just, oh, I'll only push back to the next valve and then there's somehow magically more water can go somewhere. Um, with site to site, yeah, you still get the back pressure on those points. So if, if your site to site uh, from NiFi is full and it tells Minify, Minify will back pressure, impl implement the back pressure on those queues. Yeah. Yes? Yes, absolutely. And that's actually something that I, I didn't go into because I wasn't sure about time. But um, that's. Yeah, right here. So we actually, I designed the flow in NiFi, and I set up exactly what I want. And this is, so it's tailing an application log, it's logging every message, it's splitting it into individual lines, right? That's just what we talked about. It's uh, filtering the content. So each line, it takes the timestamp, and it tags even or odd based on an attribute expression language. So it's, it's looking at the timestamp and literally going mod two, is it zero or one? Puts it back together, it encrypts all of that, and then it sends it over the site to site back to NiFi. And you can see on here, you have, you have these, the Q stats, so your back pressure would get applied there in Minify. Um, then when I take that, I run a configuration script that transforms that from a nov uh, NiFi XML template into a Minify YAML template. And then I drop that onto my Minify instance, uh, which in this case was the same machine, just on a different uh, subnet, but that's exactly how you would do it. With the with the NiFi registry that's coming, this will be even easier. Um, yeah, well, registry's here, but with the features that are coming on top of that, it'll be even easier. All right, uh, I do have a T-shirt to give away, and I usually do it for best question. See who was listening or who just cared about a different problem that I wasn't talking about. Um, I have two t-shirts, so I'm actually going to give those, I think you had the most questions, <laughs> and for splitting the lines. There you go. Any other questions? All right, I will be around. Uh, f feel free to come up and talk to me about stuff that you didn't want to say in front of the group. Uh, usually that's how security talks go. Um, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.